Today, we will listen to Jordan Peterson tell us a simple solution to addiction. And it's not rehab. He is coming. Cover your butt. In case you didn't know, Jordan Peterson recently started rehab for drug abuse. Jordan hasn't always advocated for rehab as a way to treat drug abuse. This video is a couple years old, but it exemplifies the dangers of Jordan Peterson. Let's get started and untangle this web of stupid. So you've been an educator through the rise of the smartphone, and my question basically relates to procrastination and task delay, needless task delay specifically. And given the unprecedented level of distraction that we have in today's world, I just wanted to get your perspective from a psychological standpoint on other than cleaning your damn room. What would you suggest to a student who's looking to overcome these things? Well, I think with any, let's call it addictive process. I mean, email is powerfully addictive, right? Partly, it's, it's a slot machine, and, and I mean that technically. So when you pull, it's a, that's a variable ratio reinforcement schedule, if I remember correctly. And it's very addictive because if you pull on the slot machine arm enough, you will win. And you never know which pull will reward you. And so not only is that addictive, it's very hard to extinguish that. And so... Emails like that, because there's always something beckoning, and now and then it's a jackpot. And social media is like that, because, you know, people are posting interesting things, and so... One of the biggest problems with Jordan's is that he's not an idiot. He's a scam artist. What Jordan describes here is correct. Variable racial reinforcement schedules are very hard to extinguish. And gambling uses a variable ratio to get people addicted. But... There's a difference between this kind of addiction and addiction to drugs. Let's break this down. When you hit a jackpot or even get a smaller reward, your brain releases dopamine. What ends up happening is that your brain starts releasing dopamine not just when you get a jackpot, but when you play the game. This is the same kind of anticipatory response you see with Pavlov's dogs. Gambling addicts don't just get a high from winning, they get a high from playing. The same reaction occurs in your brain when you engage with social media. Every like, view, retweet, and subscriber gives your brain a jolt of dopamine. If you're a YouTuber, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The same slot machine system makes social media addicting. So, when it comes to some kinds of addiction, the slot machine variable racial schedule of reinforcement works just fine as an explanation for why some behaviors are reinforcing. But, it does not explain all forms of addiction. Well, how do you overcome an addictive process? And partly, you do it by replacing it with something better. Like before, Jordan isn't wrong. One, and I feel like this needs a whole lot of emphasis, one way to modify behavior is to replace one behavior with another. In applied behavior analysis, we call this differential reinforcement. You place one behavior on extinction, in other words, that behavior no longer produces reinforcement, and you reinforce a desired behavior. Like I said earlier, this is one way to modify behavior. It is in no way the only way to modify behavior, and it does not work for everyone. Some behaviors are incredibly resistant to extinction, and sometimes finding a replacement behavior can be difficult, if not impossible. The takeaway here is that there's no magic simple answer to a complex issue like addiction, but rather there is a set of tools that therapists can use. Right, so when people study drug and alcohol use, they, they often make an elementary mistake, which is to try to figure out why people use drugs and alcohol. That's, that's not a smart thing to wonder. We know why people use cocaine. Cocaine directly stimulates the systems that produce positive emotion. It's like, so there's no mystery there. The mystery with cocaine is very, very simple. Why don't people take cocaine all the time until they die? That's the mystery, really, because you can get isolated rats to do that, so. We are starting to make a big shift here. Jordan started by talking about gambling and social media and how both can be addicting. Jordan is now using addictive process to mean a whole lot of things. He has moved from classical conditioning to drug addiction. 
While it is possible to say that drug addiction works the same way as gambling does, this is a very shallow understanding of addiction. This would be like saying that an electric car is just like a gas car because they both have wheels and they both get you from point A to point B. While that statement is true, both cars do have wheels and both cars do get you from point A to point B, the way that the process occurs is entirely different. Trying to repair an electric car using techniques used to repair a gas-powered car would not work very well. What is happening under the hood is not the same. Gambling addiction is therefore not treated in the same way as drug addiction. Remember that gambling is reinforced on a variable schedule. Sometimes you win, sometimes you don't. Mostly you don't. Drugs don't work on a variable schedule. They work on a fixed schedule. Drugs aren't addicting because sometimes when you shoot up you get high and sometimes you don't. This shows the clear lack of understanding that Jordan has regarding drug addiction, including his idiotic comment regarding drugs and death. Jordan, buddy, have you checked the CDC recently? In 2017, more than 70,000 people died from drug overdose, making it a leading cause in injury-related death in the United States. Finally, we have Jordan's solution to addiction. But often what people have to do to get themselves out of an addictive process is to find something better to do to replace it. Jordan's advice here is extremely dangerous. Can you replace some addiction using differential reinforcement? Yes. But this is not the solution for all addictions, nor is it the solution for everyone. Jordan knows this now. When Jordan had to face his addiction to antidepressants, he did not follow his own advice. The advice that Jordan was willing to give to his audience to follow, Jordan ignored. Jordan did the right thing and went to rehab to get professional help. He did this because he's not an idiot. He knows that there isn't a simple solution to addiction. He knows that the best way to deal with addiction is professional help. He knows that his advice is garbage and dangerous, and he won't follow it.